Hello everybody and welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael and today we're looking at a beautiful park that was actually created a few months ago. I'm just behind on spotlighting this. And it is called Park Deco by Smakai underscore D. And this was created on the PS4, I believe. And the description, which is a longer description, but it says Park Deco, a European park simulated or simulated situating next to a lake and surrounded by a dense forest. Its ride selection includes 2018 Intamin Drop Tower, 2015 Intamin Family Launch, 2008 GCI Wooden Coaster, 2003 Intamin Mega, and a 2000 Giovanola Invert. The park has lots of large rock piles. These are all from construction and expansions to the park. Credit to Mouse Fam 4 and Guitar Freak for the fonts. Um, and... Uh, it's kind of a hard name to pronounce for the ticket scanner. Thank you to Molo4 for Serp Serpent's name and the other guy that named the Iron, named Iron Rocket. I didn't manage to put shout outs in the park, so I'll include them here. Mr. Antonio, Jan, Iron Maddie, Corvus, me, MJ Games, Dragonborn McQueen, Poops It Out, Planet Plip Cam, Welfare Inish 99, Nerchacho, Moomin, Scott Boogie Gaming, Night Owl, Tall Guy Gaming. Um, so this was actually trying to see the date when it was uploaded. It was uploaded in September, so I'm actually a little bit behind on this, as I said, spotlighting it, but it's all good. Still a really, really beautiful park, and so as you can kind of see the uh, kind of overview shot of everything here, and I mean, it, it looks beautiful. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to, as I've never done this before, we're going to let the time run as normal. Um, and just kind of see how the park looks at different times of the day. So let's go ahead and get started in the hotel area. Here we are at the entrance to Park Deco. And I believe it is about 10-ish in the morning. Um, we'll see. But yeah, so as you can, I think it's about 10 or 11 o'clock now. As you can see, everybody's flooding into the park. So it's really cool kind of having the um, hotel entrance be where the spawn point is. Because it looks like everybody's coming out of the hotel. And this is a really cool, unique entrance. Like it's very, um, I mean, when, when I hear Park Deco, I think of Art Deco. Even though this isn't like the Art Deco, like, um buildings type that you would see in like Miami I still think the um, just the name of it kind of reminds me of that and you can probably hear good music I mean really creative so I think these are the turnstiles that he gave credit to a different creator for um, but this is really beautiful really really beautiful and so now as we head this way and one thing you'll notice is a lot of the buildings are kept the same throughout which I think is a really really good touch so in here we've got some food and probably a restroom yep restroom maybe i'll just put a restroom sign above that um, just to kind of let people know that's what that is um is it could be like one of those little hallways that takes you into multiple restrooms and i love the little just a little detail on stuff like this um you know it's not really gonna protect you too much if it's raining but i think it gives a cool look and provides some shade and also interesting using the corrugated roof with these pieces and kind of mixing um, so different pieces together. So I think that looks looks good. I mean, it's one of those you wouldn't really notice that's different building pieces kind of looking from afar. But this is really nice. Once again, nice covering. And oh, where do we want to go first? Do we want to go to, I think that was the Intamin? Or do we want to go to GCI? Let's go Intamin. I'm... I love GCI coasters, so we're going to save that one for last. So we head this way first. And we've got a little viewing area here, it looks like. So this is pretty cool how you can have guests eat back here and also view the coaster. Um, I'd say the only thing I would do differently is I would add on the top here, I would add the decorative course um, that is this, that kind of brick really thin kind of piece of brick that is to decorate the tops so that's what i would do on the top and bottom there i just think it'd add a little more detail but this is really cool um as we're waiting for the coaster to fly by and i love how like i said you've kind of copied a lot of stuff throughout like once again here you've got the same kind of architectural style 
um, with this. I think that's a cool touch. You got some water features there. That's, I mean, the custom supporting, that looks really good. Really, really good. So I think the coaster's actually about to fly by, so let's go check that out. Yeah, that's fantastic. <coughs> Sorry, I got a little bit of a cough, so I'm going to try to not cough at all. Um, as we kind of get an overhead view, this area looks like there could be maybe they could set up a little performance area here potentially. Um, as you can kind of see, very, very nice plaza just for people to kind of hang out in and stuff. And then there's two ways you could walk around. We could walk around this way, which kind of takes you underneath the coaster and stuff. Or we could walk through, I believe that's the exit. So I think this way would take us to the entrance. Once again, as I said, I mean, those supports are awesome. Absolutely love them. So it looks like these two end up connecting anyways. And you know me, I love the fences up, uh, the chain link fence. I think that looks good. You know, one thing you could also do is uh, if you need the fence to be a little higher at some point, it takes up more pieces, but uh, I, um, I noticed that a couple people started doing this some. Um, um, because then it creates a little bit of a higher protective fence in that sense. Um, yeah, oh, oh, hold on. So now this is the Iron Rocket. So as you can see, we are now at 4 p.m. Um, and we're just, gonna, like I said, going to let the time run and kind of experience what the park looks like and stuff. So we got Iron Rocket. And I think there might be fireworks. I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me 100% on that. But look at this queue. This is really cool, really interactive, really immersive. And then that station is awesome. Now, I wonder y'all's thoughts on this, because the only thing, if I were to give some advice, is I, I think I would remove the glass from this, this portion right here, just because you can see kind of having to have it overlap and stuff. Um, but I mean, how beautiful does this look? This looks so good. So we head down here. I mean, beautiful inside the station. You got the clocks. Is that one? Okay, that one's at the top of the lift hill. So we're going to hop on that coaster. But let's go ahead and take a look at the stats on Iron Rocket. Everything all green, which is great. G-Force is a little bit high with verticals, but everything looks good. 180 foot drop. Four inversions. Okay. And we will chat after the coaster. That was Iron Rocket, and that was that was a great coaster. Um, you can see the lighting now at night. I mean, that first drop is very... Um, I could be wrong. I feel like you see that on Max or Mox um, kind of hyper model a little bit, even though this isn't truly a hyper. It's close, but this is... I mean, this was really well done. Loved how it kind of went in some wooded areas and also had a lot of path interaction and just the look of it with the custom supports is just a beautiful coaster absolutely beautiful so now there's the exit as you can see but let's head back this way and the lighting is really good and I like using those lamps because I feel like they give off good lighting and good coloring um, 
compared to some of the other ones, and they give up, give off a lot of light. And so once again, like here's a different building, but it's using the same building pieces. And for your covering, it's using the same concept that was used in different areas of the park. And you can look at how the supports are and stuff. And so I really like that aspect of it. I would say you got to have some lights in here in the ceiling. Um, I mean, I'm sure you know how to do this, but I just want to show for people that haven't thought of this before. Um, I'm not going to pretend like I'm the first one to ever think of this because I know a lot of people do this. But if you take the the area lights like this, and now if you notice, this is really bright, right? Like it's really bright how it is. So if you take it like this, and let's say go here, up a little bit more. There we go. So now it looks like recessed lighting a bit. And so then you would just change this. And I usually go closer to gray like that. And then you put the light in there and it gives it gives it a little bit of a recess lighting so now at night you're going to have that light um, now sometimes those lights can still be a little bit too bright but i think it gives you know for us not having a great option in the game without tmtk um, i think that gives it a, a good option so now we can see the sun rising beautiful beautiful day at the park here i'm trying to remember i think so this is vacoma motorbike i believe and so, I, once again, good path interaction right here, as that's the, that's the first launch. Is this one launches or two launches? Well, I guess we'll see in a second, won't we? Once again, continuing the same pattern, and I love how the coaster kind of goes through part of it. So you can see that um, it's been adapted to its surroundings, in a sense. And once again, we got the... Uh, so this is called Surf. I mean, I kind of like how that looks from behind a little bit, just because it looks chaotic in the sense that it was meant to be like that. So I think that looks really good. So you got Surf. Yeah, I mean, just continuing the same style. Even the station has this style, which is really, really cool. So now before this train leaves so we can hop on it as we can kind of see the general layout so, actually it might have two launches yeah it has two launches um, this is actually called surfer so if we look at these stats you know hard to get a ride like this completely green but g-forces look great of course no inversions and you know what I just noticed on that last coaster it doesn't actually have any versions, but they gave it four inversions because I think some of the turns were over 90 degrees. But that's beside the point now. I will talk to you after the coaster. That's a fantastic coaster. I really enjoy that. I haven't been on one of these models in real life as, you know, the ride like Hagrid's and um, some of those stuff looks really good. Um, but this is, and I think it's really well done. I like where you've got the launches. I like how the guests can walk right past it. I also like how this launch is so close to the water. Like, I think that gives it a really, a really cool look. It almost feels like you're surfing as it's called Surfer. Um, so I think that's really cool touch. Also, it looks like, you know, I might need to look at the thing again, because it's, from the track, it doesn't look like it was meant to be Vacoma. So I wonder, I'll, know, I'll, I'll look at this when we're on the next coaster on my phone. Um, 
So I wonder if you're actually, I didn't notice this before. Yeah, you're using the, the Gerslauer track since it can launch, but then the Vacoma motorbike train. So that's kind of an interesting idea and concept, but I'll be honest, I can't remember too much from the description what model he said that was, but I'll check that out on the next part. So as we head back this way, you know, really good job with the foliage. Um, you know, when we have a limit, like, oh, I think here one thing you could have done is place some footers, kind of like you added them there, uh, which is good. But I think you could have probably placed some footers there on the ground. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so when we have a limit, you know, there's sometimes there's there's um, things that you need to cut out that you wish you couldn't cut out in a park just to be able to kind of fit everything you want in the park, if that makes sense. And I feel like the one thing this park's missing is it's missing a good amount of... Oh, that's cool. Rest in peace. Yep. Um, gosh, that was that long ago already. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, so I think this park's just missing flat rides, right? Because you got four coasters and one flat ride in the park. It's also missing a lot of build, or not a lot. I'd say it's missing more buildings, but that's something that I feel like's harder to to get accustomed to doing in parks because you know theme parks are just littered with buildings. Um, but that's one thing I feel. That's one area where I feel like I've gotten better at it is spacing that part out now. But this is cool. So we got a little shop. I like it. I like the height of it and everything. And you've got the area where you go buy stuff and a make do kind of clothes rack area. So that's spectacular. I like this little seating area. This reminds me of stuff they have at like Cedar Point, kind of on the midway. Maybe the only thing I'd say is placing the decorative course piece or something down there to kind of break up where the path meets the different look of the path, if that makes sense. Um, a kind of a barrier. But now we have Serpent, and yeah, this is supposed to be uh, Giovanola, I believe. And gosh, I'm already forgetting everything that, was, that I said in the intro, so I'm going to have to look at that again. But it's a two-seater boa. And let's go ahead and look at the stats. G-forces look great. I will talk to you after the coaster. So that was Serpent, and I want to point out a couple things here. And so I was right. This was Giovanola. Um, this was actually an Intamin family launch. So that's why i um, using the different track instead of the Vacoma-looking track. Um, but one thing I want to point out here that's awesome is that, that part right there. So it's kind of like I know Nerd Chacho said this in a video. Uh, God, it's almost two years ago probably. When he was, on, or maybe about a year ago, working on, I think it was his, uh, man, I'm forgetting the name of it, Chachalandia, I believe, and was talking about B&M inverts and how each B&M invert's first drop is different, essentially. And, you know, B&M came out of Giovanola, like a couple of the guys left Giovanola to start B&M. And one thing you notice about their zero G rolls is a lot of them look a lot like this and most of us who play this game me included 
don't really do these zero G rolls properly because they're really tough to do and they look different on almost every coaster, but especially on ones like this that aren't that tall, they they really flatten out before you start the turn. And I'm guessing it just has something to do with the forces. Like if you haven't really noticed it or if you're wondering what I'm talking about, just get on Google and type in like Banshee zero G roll or one of those because especially with the one at Banshee because it's so high off the ground, you can tell it's got a very kind of different shaping to it um, and so I think you did a really good job with that right there and yeah I just think you did a did an absolutely wonderful job and so now we've got the GCI wooden coaster um, which GCI might be pretty quickly becoming one of my favorite models um, or manufacturers but that's really cool I think that's a beautiful view Park Deco. That is awesome. And you see the coaster in the background. Mr. Wood. All right. Not going to make a comment about that. <laughs> Man, everybody loves this coaster. This is, once again, another good interactive queue. And once again, using the same style of covering throughout the park. And I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this station. Um, I feel like it's kind of bland a little bit, and it does need lighting. And, you know, that's not that it's... I think it looks really good from the outside, which I guess maybe is ultimately the point. Um, but yeah, that's just my idea. And let's see. I believe in your last park you had a really good GCI coaster. So I'm really excited to see how this one is as we check these stats. Stats look great, 65 foot drop, and I'll talk to you after the coaster. So that was uh, Mr. Wood, <laughs> and I mean, it's a fantastic coaster. Um, I like the first drop, as I know, I'm trying to get more knowledgeable on the names, or trying to remember more of the names of a lot of the European wooden coasters, and or just the ones that are international, and I know there are a few at least that have that first style of drop, and so I think that's a cool, like I think there's one at Europa Park. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but yeah, this is, I mean, I think the layout's great. It's got good air time. Um, it's one of those that if you ride, you probably would be like, this thing only goes 50 something miles per hour, 40 something, whatever it was. Like it probably s seems a lot faster than it is. Like take Mystic Timbers, for example. That thing only goes 58 miles per hour. It, it feels like it goes like 80. Like it doesn't feel like it only goes 58 miles per hour. At least in my opinion. Um, so that was really good. Once again, I said I like this view. I think having that kind of little water feature area is really nice. And so, yeah, now we have finished the park. As you know, it's not a not a super large park because it's only got four coasters and then that one flat ride. Um, let's see if we go look at the flat ride here. And we didn't really look at the covering, but this kind of ride skin is really cool as I know that's not easy to do. I just wish these... Oh, that's... So you used Ivy. Okay, so that's a cool thing. So you used Ivy. The issue with the Ivy is it's like two-dimensional, which is really, really weird. Like, it's one of the only pieces in the game that's like that. But then you use the Scavola, I believe is how you pronounce it, on top of it to kind of give it that look of it being kind of nice and bushy and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, so you can see the layout of the paths and everything, and 
I think this is a fantastic park. I'm interested to know what your favorite coaster was or what y'all thought, for those of you that are watching this. I think if I were to rank my coasters, mm, probably would have to go one, and then probably two, three, and then four. And the reason I do that is I think both of these had a, just a few moments where it rattled just a bit. Um, so I feel like if that was real life and it had a little bit of a rattle, it might take away from it just a bit. But I think this launch coaster was fantastic. Like, it's definitely not as thrilling as that Intamin Mega Coaster. But, you know, I think this... I think they they are all amazing coasters. So, like, the, if this is a park you make and this is your worst coaster, I mean, that's a... That means it's a fantastic coaster lineup. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. And as you can see, um, a good way to use a lot of the map. And you did this on your last park as well, kind of creating this lake around it. And so I think this is really, really cool. So thank you guys so much for watching. So make sure to check the links below. As I've got a link to the previous park by the same creator that I checked out, and I've got the link to where you can download this on the Frontier Workshop as well. So thank you guys so much for watching, and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Talk to you later.